Hello friends, welcome to this uh, Facebook live session of Indira Gandhi National Open University. I, Dr. Niradhar De, faculty member School of Education, IGNU New Delhi, welcome you all on my personal behalf and on behalf of School of Education IGNU to this Facebook live session. So friends, today we are going to discuss one of the important course of IGNU B. Ed. program. The course title is, uh, the course code is BES127 and course title is Assessment for Learning. So friend, today uh, in, uh, in my earlier session, in the first session, in part one, uh, of, uh, the part one session of this course, already we have discussed the course objective and uh, the detail concept, detail philosophy that has been addressed for designing this course. And in this program, we will discuss that uh, what are the important content point that has been addressed, what are the important concept that has been addressed in different units uh, and in different blocks of this course. So friends, uh, 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 in this program, uh, in this session, we will discuss about a detailed introduction of the content point and the concept of this course. So friends, uh, before discussing uh, the uh, design of the course structure and units, let me to just go through very briefly about uh, some of the general aspect of the B. Ed. program. As you know, Indira Gandhi National Open University uh, has developed Bachelor of Education program as per the NCTE, National Council for Teacher Education Regulations 2014, which is uh, the regulatory body of Indian teacher education program. And uh, uh, this Open and Distance Learning B. Ed. program uh, that has been launched by IGNU that is since July 2016 session, okay, the revised B. Ed. program. And you know, if you go through the very principle, the fundamental principle, the concept of NCT regulations, teacher education regulations to 2014, you will find that uh, the teacher education curriculum may be at the diploma level, may be at the bachelor level or at the master level that has been developed as per the constructivist approach of teaching and learning process is concerned. So that's why friend, the ODL B. Ed. program which is developed by School of Education, IGNU and launched by IGNU since July 2016 session, you will find that this program has developed as per the principle, as per the concept, as per the approach of constructivist. Okay. Further, we will discuss that uh, what are the different uh, approaches and content points that has been designed and that has been included as per the constructivist approach. Then further, you know this program, the uh, Bachelor of Education program, uh, it prepares the teachers. This is a teacher education program. Okay, it 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 provides uh, you can say detailed training to the teacher. Uh, uh, you know the teacher will further empower themselves, enable themselves to teach in schools, to teach in classroom different subjects. Okay, so they will transact the school textbooks, the school curriculum. So that's why. Uh, acquisition of skill uh, is one of the practical aspect as well as acquisition of different teaching skill is one of the very important aspect of this B. Ed. program. So that's why friend you will find that this IGNU B. Ed. program is a combination of theoretical construct at the same time practical oriented and skill oriented courses. Further we will discuss that what are the skill oriented and practical courses are included in the first and second year of this program. Then friends, it prepares teachers uh, who can eligible to teach the students at the secondary stage of school education that is in class 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th as per the NEP 2020 National Education Policy 2020 which is recently uh, you know, uh, which is now uh, you know, um, uh, uh, in the process of implementation. So friends, further uh, just to touch upon some of the uh, other important points just like the eligibility of the program is at least 50% uh, marks either in the bachelor and or master degree in science, social sciences, commerce and humanities discipline. Apart from this, uh, the aspirants, the candidates, uh, should be a trend in service teacher in elementary education. That means uh, 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 now at present they are teaching, they, they must have teaching at the elementary school. Okay. Then further 
candidates who have completed a NCT recognized teacher education program through face to face mode. So, they are only eligible means those have already pursued uh, a NCT recognized teacher education uh, certificate program or a diploma program just like DLED or a DED diploma in education which is recognized by NCTE and which is that they have done it in a conventional system in a regular system in a face to face system. So, they are eligible to pursue IGNU B Ed program. Then further total credit of this program is of 72 as this is a 2 years program. The learners have to study 72 credits that is 36 credits in the first year and again 36 credit in the second year. Total duration of this program uh, that is minimum of 2 years and maximum of 5 years. And uh, this program offered uh, in the January session of every year. Okay. As you know, IGNU practices two sessions in a year that is January and July. But so far as this program, B.E. program is concerned, this program offers only in the January session of every year. Then further, B.E. program is, uh, uh, you know, uh, this has been developed in both the languages, in both the medium, that is English as well as Hindi. So friend, these are the certain general aspect uh, of this program of the B.E.D. program then further let me to just touch upon the important course components that has been included in the first year and second year of this program. So far as first year uh, B.E.D. program is concerned you will find that the courses that has been designed in five different components just like core courses 16 credits then content based methodology courses you will find that uh, two content uh, uh, five content based methodology courses that has been developed that is called as the pedagogy courses just like pedagogy of science, pedagogy of mathematics, pedagogy of social science, pedagogy of languages that means pedagogy of English and pedagogy of Hindi. So what the learners uh, will do they have to select any two pedagogy courses and each course is having two credit weightage so they have to study eight credits. Then further so far as practical and skill based activities are concerned, courses are concerned, the learners they have to study, they have to uh, you can say uh, pursue workshop 1 which will be conducted at the program study center level that is uh, 12 days face to face interaction, rigorous involvement in different activities, different practical activities, different skill based activities that is at the study center level that is of 4 credit weightage which is compulsory in nature. <coughs> then the further the learners will pursue two EPC courses, EPC 1 and 2, enhancing professional capacities, EPC 1 and EPC 2. This is also a skill based course. So, what the learners will do? They have to pursue two courses of EPC, EPC 1 of 2 credit and EPC 2 is of 2 credit course. Then further they have to engage themselves in internship. Okay, they will visit the school and they will engage themselves in different school based activities what is going on in the school. So, uh, total 4 week that means in 1 month in the first year of B.Ed program they will engage themselves in the school based activities okay. and uh, which is compulsory in nature and total credit is of 4. So, total if I will include all the credits in 5 different components of the courses they have to study 36 credits and friends. Uh, in the second year of this program again the learners will study 36 credits that is from 5 different components of the courses just like 4 core courses uh, they have to study uh, which is total 12 credits then one optional course they have to study a group of a pool of optional courses are given and uh, among the optional courses they have to study one course that is of 4 credit weightage. Then workshop 2 just like workshop 1 in the first year here also 12 days face to face workshop they have to pursue ok and uh, which is compulsory in nature and uh, the credit weightage is of 4. Then EPC 3 and 4 enhancing professional capacities 3 and enhancing professional capacities 4 two courses they have to study in the second year of this program which is of 2 credit each so that means total 4 credits they have to study and internship 2 again they have to spend the learners they have to go to different school and they have to engage themselves in teaching observation and other school based activities they will take the leadership to organize the activities uh, to assess the performance of the learners at the same time they will act just like a full fledged teacher they will develop the skills which is required to teach in a school and to involve themselves in different other activities school based uh, activities both in scholastic 
as well as in co-scholastic activities, activities. So that's why complete four months internship that has been kept in the second year of this program, which is of 12 credit weightage. So total 36 credits they have to study in the second year of this program. Then further, uh, today we are going to discuss one of the core course, the, the, the course design, the course structure of one of the core course of the second year B.Ed program. This course that I have coordinated, the course title is BES 1 to 7 that is assessment for learning. So friends, let me to just touch upon that what are the other courses that has been included under this core courses in second year of B.Ed program that is BES 1 to 6, knowledge and curriculum is of 4 credit course. BES 1 to 7 assessment for learning is of 4 credit course, BES 1 to 8 that is creating an inclusive school is a 2 credit course, then BES 1 to 9 that is gender school and society is also a 2 credit course. So if you will include all these credit then 12 credit core courses they have to study in the second year of this B.Ed program and among these core courses one course which is BES 1 to 7, this is the course code and course title assessment for learning. Today we will discuss and further uh, we will discuss that uh, uh, the detailed course structure, blocks and units that has been included in this course. So friends, as I have already said that this course has been designed in four different blocks, four different blocks, block 1, 2, 3 and 4, okay, which is available in e course portal of IGNO. Indira Gandhi National Open University website, IGNO website and you will also get the complete self-learning material in IGNO students app. Okay. So my request will be if you have received the study material from your regional center or from MPDT which is a dedicated division of IGNO uh, who develops this material and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, distribute this material and if, if you have not received please go through the IGNCOS portal you will get the soft copy of the material. Okay very nicely we have developed this course in four different blocks and this course will help you a lot will will make you empower to understand the current concept of assessment the constructivist approach uh, that can be used in assessment not only in teaching rather in assessment and this course will empower yourself to practice different assessment techniques assessment methods assessment tools for uh, using it in your school, in your teaching for assessing the performance of the learners, both in scholastic and co-scholastic areas. So friends, let us go forward to discuss about that, uh, uh, the detailed design of this course. So I am not going through the detailed objectives as this has been already discussed in my past program. Uh, so elaborately I have discussed about the objectives. So very brief, briefly, if I will say that the constructivist approach uh, of teaching learning. When we talk about the constructivist approach of teaching learning process, you will find that assessment is an integrated part okay, of every teaching learning process. Every day when teachers face the students and engage themselves for, for transacting curriculum, for transacting a topic, you will find that teachers do many activities okay, in the school. So earlier what we are doing mostly we are engaging ourselves in a type of torment uh, evaluation or term and examination a type of summative assessment but so far as the new concept so far as the constructivist approach of teaching and learning and assessment is concerned you will find that uh, teachers observation formal and informal observation teachers engagement with the student uh, with the students when the students are doing certain activities in the class maybe within the group maybe within the peer okay so how that can be engaged how that can be observed and uh, uh, the performance of the students, the engagement of the students, uh, you can say the behavior of the students, uh, both in the aspect of scholastic and co-scholastic can be assessed, okay. How authentic assessment practices can be conducted by, how varieties of tools and techniques can be used for assessing the performance of the learners because the nature of topics are different uh, and so far as you will find that in an inclusive setting of school, in an inclusive setting of classroom, we are, we are getting students from different backgrounds, from different socio-economic background, from different diverse background, from different language background, from different culture, from different tradition, from different belief, from different value system. So how to address that group of learners in teaching? At the same time, when everything is different as a teacher, we are dealing the students those are really different and how to how to use uh, 
you know, different techniques for, for conducting, for assessing their performance in both in scholastic and co-scholastic areas. Only a single tool is not enough. When, when all the minds are different, the understanding is different, experiences are different, observations are different, then a single tool may not be possible. You will find a group of learners who are really coming from a multilingual background. You will find a group of learners who are differently abled. So how to assess them also in the teaching learning process. So for them, for them, a single tool is not enough. So that's why friends, keeping in consideration of the constructivist approach of learning as well as assessment, how to use and assess by using the, the inquiry based learning, uh, project based learning, problem based learning, you will find that this course is designed very nicely. It will, it will definitely empower you. It will definitely help you to understand the current practices of assessment then accordingly to develop certain skill and further to transact to, to implement those skills uh, in teaching. So friends keeping in consideration of all these objectives you will find that this course has been developed and further this course will also empower you how to use information communication technology, how to use different online assessment tool so far as teaching and learning process is concerned, so far as assessing performance of the learner is concerned. And, and dear teachers, my trainee teachers and my friends, you might be acquainted, you might be now involved in different teaching learning activities and assessment activities. You must have uh, you know, uh, observed that uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic situation starting from 1st April, starting from March 2020 until today, you know, the, the school teachers, those are teaching in different schools, both in government and private and other schools, they are engaged themselves in online teaching, okay, online assessment also. You will find that after completion of a chapter, what they are doing, they are developing certain online assessment too, the, the online assessment, certain questionnaire, certain test, okay. So they are do, doing it by using certain online assessment tools. So this course will help you how to use different online tools for assessing performance of the learners, okay. So these are the certain objectives keeping in consideration this beautiful course that has been developed that is uh, assessment for learning. We are not talking about assessment of learning, rather assessment for learning. So friends, uh, we'll further we will discuss about the very concept of assessment for learning. Now let me to uh, discuss about uh, you know uh, the course structure of this course BES 1 to 7 assessment for learning. So friends, this course has been designed in four different block. Uh, that is block one, uh, block title is the evaluation and teaching learning process, block two that is techniques and tools of assessment and evaluation, block three is learner's evaluation, then block four is analyzing and interpreting learner's performance. So you will find that starting from, starting from the concept of evaluation, okay, the constructivist concept of evaluation as well as the earlier concept of evaluation, we have reached at how to analyze and interpret the performance of the students, the data, the um, you can say the scores that the students uh, uh, have got uh, 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 from their course from by uh, using different tests. So how to analyze it quantitatively at the same time qualitatively. So that is uh, uh, that has been addressed in different blocks. So friend, as this is a four credit course, this course has been designed in. Uh, four different blocks and 17 different units. Okay, so further we will discuss that what are the different units that has been included in different blocks. So friends, now uh, let us focus upon the first block, the uh, first block title that is evaluation in teaching learning process. Evaluation in teaching learning process, you will find that this block is designed in four different unit. Unit 1 that is uh, the title is concept and purpose of evaluation, unit 2 that is prospectives of assessment, unit 3 that is approaches to evaluation, then unit 4 that is issues, concerns and trends in assessment and evaluation. Friends beautifully you know you will find the content point that has been included that will help you a lot to understand the concept and purpose of evaluation that has been addressed in the first unit. Okay, So we talk about measurement. We talk about assessment and we also talk about evaluation. Many a time synonymously we also use these three concepts, okay, the concept of measurement, the concept of assessment and the concept of evaluation. Whether, whether uh, the three concepts are same or there is any difference. Friends, there is the conceptual difference between these three terms. 
when we talk about measurement mostly it deals the quantitative aspect okay let we have certain score of the students okay so uh, uh, it talks about you can say the individual scores the raw scores okay that is the quantitative description of something quantitative description of students performance but when we talk about assessment this is not only the quantitative aspect of students performance that is when when we are getting the score of uh, the score of on a particular subject on a particular test you can say a group of students then when you are analyzing that scores we are calculating the average score you are saying that uh, uh, in a particular uh, section the average score in mathematics is 55 average score in english is uh, let 62 average score in science is 75 so here what you are doing you are just analyzing the individual scores you are just analyzing the raw scores so friends measurement provides very limited meaning that is the raw scores and when we talk about assessment it provides more meaning that means we, here we are interpreting we are analyzing the scores by using certain statistics okay and uh, further when we talk about evaluation you see only measurement and only assessment is not enough so far as uh, the performance of the learners in scholastic and score scholastic areas is concerned so that's why when we added value judgment with assessment or with uh, measurement then we can say that that is the concept of evaluation that means qualitatively how the learner is doing okay so in which aspect in which area the learner is doing well and uh, uh, what are uh, the value system of the learners okay so what we are doing that uh, 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 you can say within a group uh, 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 you can also observe the certification, the certificate of the learners that uh, you will find that this has been mentioned that so far as life skill aspect is concerned, so far as different values is concerned that uh, uh, how uh, the behavior of the learner is. So friends, when we talk about evaluation, it includes the value judgment, okay? A learner is doing well, he stood fast in the class at the same time, what are the other value pattern of that learner, value, uh, uh, value system of that learners, okay? So that's why it includes the value judgment. So you will find that such things we have developed, uh, we, we, we have discussed in this course, in the first unit of this course, then further we have discussed about the prospectives of assessment. So friends, NCT regulations 2014 in teacher education program, you will find that the context and perspective of the courses are different, different courses. You will find this has been developed as per the constructivist approach. So when we talk about assessment, you will find that the concept and perspective of assessment as per the behavioristic uh, approach of teaching and learning process, as per the cognitivist approach of teaching and learning process, as per the constructivist approach of teaching and learning uh, uh, process is concerned, teaching and the pedagogy is concerned. So friends, when we talk about behavioristic approach of teaching and learning, you will find that mostly a type of teacher made, uh, mostly a type of summative test a type of term and examination is given much importance but when we talk about uh, uh, means the summative evaluation which is mostly the teacher centered that is based upon the teacher centered approach but when we talk about constructivist approach you will find that uh, we talk about not assessment of learning rather we talk about assessment for learning assessment of, of learning means you are just simply assessing the performance of the learners by using a tool but but when you use this concept assessment for learning that means how how assessment will help the learner for enhancing their learning how the learner will how you empower the learner that they will they will understand about their weak points they will understand about their weaknesses in different topics in different content point in different subjects then accordingly how they can understand that what are the different things that what are the different aspects the, uh, the learners he or she is supposed to do okay so that's why here assessment will help the learner for engaging themselves for enhancing new knowledge for acquiring new knowledge for getting new knowledge for understanding new knowledge that will lead the learners to know more and more okay so that's why that will develop their understanding but when we talk about just like in the behavioristic approach or in the cognitivist approach, cognitivist approach is something different that also more or less related with the constructivist approach. Uh, but when we talk about the behavioristic approach, you will find that that is that is highly based upon a teacher centric approach, not the student centric approach that is that that focus upon the term and examination as summative types of assessment. But when we talk about assessment for learning, so that deals 
a continuous assessment. Students evaluation by teacher formally and informally, by observation, by interview, by using varieties of tools and techniques. Okay. And by, by, by engaging learners in peer activities at the same time in group activities, peer assessment activities, group assessment activities and other types of assessment also by using, by using the portfolio, portfolio or e-portfolio that is also another concept. Further in unit 3, uh, different approaches of evaluation that has been discussed so far as the functions of assessment and evaluation is concerned, we can say that assessment is of four types, formative asses, uh, placement assessment. Uh, formative assessment, diagnostic assessment and, and you can say summative assessment. So the assessment techniques that we use before uh, induction to a program, before starting of the instructional process, we call it is the placement assessment and after inducting to the system, after taking admission uh, to a system, the teaching learning process and assessment that is conducted, that is called as the formative assessment and when we identify certain learning difficulties of the learners, then accordingly when uh, we engage certain technique, we follow certain technique to know the causes of the learning difficulties of the learners and accordingly we provide certain remedial measures, certain remedial treatment, certain remedial teaching that is the part of diagnostic evaluation and further after completion, after completion of the total instruction when we conduct a type of test that may be annual test, that may be a semester end examination which is called as a summative types of evaluation. So friends, this course will help you a lot the purpose of conducting different types of test, different types of test in an academic session that starting from a placement to summative. Okay. Then further, you will also acquaint yourself to understand uh, the types of evaluation so far as the nature of reference is concerned. That may be a non-referent test and that may be a criterion referent test, the concept of a norm referent test and the concept of a criterion referent test. Okay? So when you can say a norm referent test, when, when we compare the students perform, performance or students position in a well defined known group that can be done by a norm referent test. And when we compare, uh, you can say or you can say um, uh, when we consider performance of the students in a well defined learning task. I am not saying here the group learning task that that can be done by a criterion and reference test. So here certain criteria will be developed. So friends if you will go through when you will go through these units you will find that how uh, uh, lucidly this has been explained, this has been elaborated with suitable illustrations and examples. Then the unit 4 will help you to understand a type of uh, uh, <coughs> to understand the concept just like the issues and concerns and trends in assessment and evaluation. So what are the new concepts just like open book examination, just like online examination, question bank, semester and examination, portfolio and e-portfolio, how to use e-portfolio as one of the assessment tool for assessing scholastic and co-scholastic abilities of the learners. You will find that beautifully this has been discussed and which is highly used and you, you will also involve yourself to understand about the choice based credit system CBCS. Okay? So how the assessment strategies should be uh, implemented, should be designed as per the choice based system curriculum, CBCS system curriculum is concerned. Further friends, let us go to discuss about the second block. Second block that is the block title is techniques and tools of assessment and evaluation. So four units that has been included in this block, block unit five that is techniques of assessment and evaluation, unit six that is criteria of a good tool, unit seven that is tools for assessment and evaluation, unit eight that is ICT based assessment and evaluation. So friends this block will provide you an understanding about different tools, different tools and techniques. So friends I was talking earlier that a single tool a single test, a single technique is not enough okay, for assessing the performance of the learners so far as the scholastic and co-scholastic abilities is concerned. So that's why varieties of tools, it may be achievement test, it may be attitude test, it may be intelligent test, it may be a type of rating scale, it may be a type of checklist, it may be for preparing a type of observation schedule, a type of interview schedule. Okay, So how to do this, how to do this? What are the system, what are the precautions uh, we supposed to maintain for uh, you know, uh, developing certain tools and for using certain tools and what are the criteria of a good tool. 
so to which tool will say that this is a good tool so criteria of a tool uh, uh, if you go through the unit 6 uh, of this tool, I, I, I personally have written this unit, you will find that the concept of reliability, the concept of validity, how to establish the reliability and validity when you prepare a tool, what is a teacher made tool and what is a standardized tool. For school based activities, for using in the school, what are the different tools can be used, okay, how to develop how to standardize the tool, how to establish the reliability and validity, okay. So that is also another important aspect, important content point of this course. Then further when you come uh, to discuss, uh, um, uh, come to study unit 8 that is ICT based assessment and evaluation, how to use information communication technology in ICT, how to interpret the data by using ICT, how to prepare, how to make. Uh, different types of figures, different types of graphs, it may be a pie chart, it may be a histogram, it may be a cumulative frequency curve, it may be a, uh, uh, you can say other types of uh, figures, other types of graphs also for, uh, you know, analyzing the performance of the students, for analyzing, uh, uh, you can say the, stu the students course. So, this block will provide you a detailed understanding about what is a tool, what is a techniques, how to use it, how to develop it and contextually how to use it uh, as a teacher in your class keeping in consideration of the nature of the topic, nature of the subject, how you will use it. Further, block 3, the title of block 3 is learner's evaluation and here you will engage yourself studying for units, unit 9, 10, 11 and 12 that is unit 9 teacher made achievement test, unit 10 commonly used test in schools. Then unit 11 identification of learning gaps and corrective measures, I have particular, uh, personally I have written this unit, then unit 12 that is continuous and comprehensive evaluation. So friends, when you are preparing a test, a tool for uh, measuring performance uh, of your students in your class being a teacher, you might be developing essay types of test or a, or a type of objective types of test, so how to develop it, how to write items. So far as matching types of item is concerned, so far as fill in the blanks, so far as the recall types of question is concerned, so far as the recognition types of question is concerned, what precautions one supposed to follow for writing, for developing items for a tool, then further how to identify the learning gaps uh, of the learners and how to provide the corrective measures. Many a time you must have observed when you are conducting a type of formative assessment, uh, you, can, you, you can find the idea that a group of students, they are not doing well, a group of students really they are not doing well, okay. So they are lacking behind the average score. So then what you have to do, how to find out that what are the causes for these learning difficulties. Then how to uh, conduct a type of action research for knowing the learning difficulties, knowing the causes of this learning difficulties. Then how to address those difficulties, how to overcome those difficulties, how to provide corrective measures, okay. Uh, you will find that nowadays most of the schools, you know, they are identifying such group of learners and they are providing certain extra treatment to them, okay. So that is why this course will also help you to understand learning difficulties of the learners at the same time to provide, uh, you can say, uh, uh, corrective measures for bringing that group of students at the average stage, okay. Then further unit in unit 12. You will find that uh, how continuous comprehensive evaluation should be used in the teaching learning process, how observation technique can be used as one of the assessment tool for the, uh, for the learners, how the teacher will do it and when there is a teaching learning process, there is assessment. So what are the different techniques uh, the teacher can adopt and how continuously teacher can get an idea about the development of the learners, so that is also important concerns. Uh, in this block. Then the last block that is the fourth block here we have discussed about, uh, 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 you see this block has been designed in five different units, unit 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 and the block title is analyzing and interpreting learners performance. So the performance that you have received, the score, quantitative and qualitative score that you have received or qualitative data that you have received through your observation and interview, how to analyze it. So for analyzing it, first of all you have to develop, you can say a frequency distribution table. So how to do the tabulation of the scores of the students and further how to present it by using different graphs, different figure, okay. That is the graphical presentation 
of data. So friends, this unit will help you, unit 13 will help you to know about, uh, you can say the strong point of different figure and which figure is useful for what type of data and how to compare the performance of the students by using different figures. Then in unit 14, you will come across to study, you will get uh, understanding about for the application of different descriptive statistics, different simple statistics that can be used highly in the schools for interpreting result of the students, just like measures of central tendency, that is mean, median and mode, what is the concept of, concept of it, what formulas and what concept, what techniques you will use to find out the average score, median score, at the same time the mode score of the group and further how this can be utilized uh, so far as school based assessment is concerned. Then in unit 15 you will engage yourself to, to uh, use certain statistics that is called as the measure of dispersion or measures of variability that means the particular statistical techniques that you will study in this unit that is average deviation, range, quartile deviation and standard deviation, percentile and percentile rank also. Okay. So that is also another important concern being a teacher. This is also your part. You may be a teacher of science, maybe social science, maybe language. So all statistical analysis that you have to study because that is part of your work. Then in unit 16, we have discussed about correlation. Many a time uh, you must have, uh, you know, uh, using these statistics to correlate uh, the performance of group of students, okay, to correlate students performance in two different subjects, okay. So what to do it, what uh, particular correlation statistics that you have to do and how you can interpret it, okay. So here we have discussed the correlation formulas, the core different correlation, uh, that's the product moment correlation that we have discussed about uh, rank difference methods of correlation, that how to use it and how to interpret the result of the students and how to establish uh, a correlation between two sets of scores so far as different subject is concerned. Then in unit 17, that is the last unit of this course, here we have discussed about the nature of distribution and its interpretation. Okay, So we have discussed that, you see, if, when you are getting uh, a score of a group, you will find that uh, uh, you do not know whether the score is normally distributed or the score is, is not normally distributed, it is skewed, okay, either negatively skewed or positively skewed, then what can you do? So by using a technique that is called as NPC, normal probability curve, statistically you can find out that the, the, the performance of the group is normally distributed or not, so that you can get an idea about the average performance of the group at, at the same time the performance of other uh, students, other subjects. Uh, of your class. So that is why this unit will help you to understand about the normal ability of the students in different subjects to whom you are teaching or in your school. So friends, this is all about uh, the concepts, uh, the content point and uh, the major aspects that has been addressed in four different blocks or um, in different units of four different blocks of the course BES 1 to 7 assessment for learning. This has been designed in 17 different units. Believe me, this course will help you a lot to understand assessment at the same time to practice uh, different assessment tools and techniques in your teaching and learning, uh, uh, in your teaching. Further, the transaction methodologies that I have already discussed in my earlier video program. So that is why I am not going through detail about it. You can uh, go through my earlier program. Then so far as evaluation is concerned, you see uh, uh, minimum D grade is required for successful completion of assignment and further minimum D grade is required for successful completion of a tournament examination. And course wise when we include the performance of assessment, uh, uh, assignment and uh, uh, tournament examination, it should be at least a C grade for successful completion of that course. Okay. So here we follow a five point grading system that is highest grade is A and the lowest grade is E. You are supposed to earn at least a C grade in each and every uh, course uh, including uh, assignment component which is continuous in nature at the same time the term and examination uh, um, uh, <coughs> okay, including these two components at least you earn a C grade for successful completion of this course. So friends uh, uh, for further queries as I have coordinated this course, you can write to me, 
niradhar at igno.se.in. You can also make me a telephone call that is 011-295-7294. My intercom number is 2994. You can also visit my Facebook page. You will get many videos. Uh, and you can also visit my YouTube channel. You will also get many video programs which has been dedicatedly developed, keeping in consideration of the need of the students relating to your program and relating to other education themes that will help you a lot for understanding your courses, understanding your program. So friends, in our next program on any other day, we'll discuss other aspect of education. I have already completed three courses of a detailed introduction of BES 122, BES 125 and BES 127 of IGNU B.Ed program. Thank you.